from uh, Tartan and CNC Yachts. Uh, Tom McNeil grew up in the Cleveland area. He's a sailboat racer, started racing as a, I'd say a young child. Like, to me, he still looks kind of young. <laughs> but a young child. <laughs> graduated from Case and uh, went to work in the medical industry and somebody from Tartan called him up and said, wouldn't you rather be designing boats than working on medical equipment? So I'm not quite sure why he decided to, uh, to work on sailboats. But uh, Tom, the fruit of Tom's labor, uh, the most recent one is the CNC 101, which was the domestic boat of the year and the best performance cruiser, 30 to 39 feet, by Cruising World magazine. So, uh, so help me welcome our speaker this evening, Tom McNeil from Tartan. Thank you very much, Brian. And thank you for inviting me. Thank you all for having me. It's been a pleasure talking to you for the last hour and a half or so I've been around, just getting to meet, meet and know people and, and various experiences in the sailing, sailing community here in the Cleveland area. As Brian mentioned, I grew up in the Cleveland area. Uh, been sailing since I was born, although there was about a two-year stick where my dad had a powerboat. We'll forgive him for that. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he bought a sailboat when I was four, and I've been racing and sailing competitively pretty much since then. Um, tonight, I would just kind of want to go through a little bit about who we are at Tartan Marine Company, what we do, and then we'll get into the CNC 101 a little bit. Feel free to stop me at any point and ask questions. Uh, I'd like this to be interactive. If, you know, if there's questions I can answer, please let me know. Um, starters, uh, Tartan Marine Company. We have three different brands, CNC Yachts, Tartan Yachts, and Legacy Yachts. Legacy Yachts is a Down East style powerboat. Yes? We old people in the back here are having trouble hearing you. Could you use the mic? Grab that light. I can, yeah. Yeah, grab the mic. <laughs> I think I can, I think I can manage both here. Much better. Thank you. Sorry about that. So as I was mentioning, at Tartan Marine Company, we have three different brands. We have CNC Yachts. It's our kind of our performance brand. Tartan Yachts, Performance Cruising, and Legacy Yachts, which is a Downey style powerboat brand. Uh, we acquired Legacy about three years ago at this point. Haven't done much with it because the powerboat market in that segment isn't doing real well. Uh, we're focusing on our core brands starting in CNC Yachts. A little bit about who we are. Uh, sorry, just covered this. Tartan Marine Company builds two of the biggest names in the, the marine industry for sailboats, Tartan Yachts and CNC Yachts. Uh, we're designed and built in Fairport Harbor, Ohio. And we try to incorporate industry leading design technology and craftsmanship into every boat we build. One of the overreaching themes that we try to implement every day is that we want to strive every day that the boat we build today is the best boat we've ever built. We were lucky enough in 2010 to be purchased by a gentleman named Steve Melbasa from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Steve has taken a whole new light to what we do, uh, a whole new emphasis on who we are as a company, established some, some pretty important core values. Uh, it's operate our business with a customer focus. We want to make sure that our customer experience is the best customer experience it can possibly be. Provide a working environment for our associates that fosters passion and pride in their work. We want our guys to go home from work every day and say, hey, I had a great day. I'm proud of what I did. To that end, when we're launching or, or shipping a new boat, we'll frequently have the guys in with their families so that they can show off to their families and friends what it is that they do on a daily basis. And then lastly, it's economic benefit for our owners, suppliers, associates, and the company, but only after achieving the first two goals. Steve makes it very clear on a daily basis that if we're making money but not hitting those other two, we fail. A little bit of the history of Tartan Yachts. Uh, Tartan Yachts was founded in 1961 by Charlie Britton. It was actually founded in Grand River, Ohio. The initial boats were built by Douglas and McLeod, who built Thistles, Highlanders, and a number of other sailboats over the years. The first model, the Tartan 27, uh, was really revolutionary in its time. It was the first major production boat built out of fiberglass as opposed to wood, and it launched a new era of production fiberglass boat building in the 60s and 70s. Over 700 Tartan 27s were built in its 19-year production run. Tartan yachts today, we have seven different models. Uh, we range from 26 feet to 53 feet. On the left is the brand new Tartan Fantail 26, designed by Tim Jacket and launched last fall for the Annapolis Boat Show. It's a 26 foot gentleman's day sailor, self-tacking jib, asymmetrical spinnaker, and a retractable sprit. 
One of the really cool things about this boat is sitting at dockside, she's a beautiful, classic looking day sailor. But below the waterline is a high performance hull with great foils and a high performance keel, so the boat really gets up and goes. On the other end of the extreme, we've got the Tartan 5300. The Tartan 5300 is a true blue water cruiser. Uh, she's 53 feet long, 16 feet wide, and weighs about 45,000 pounds. We are, we are currently wrapping up 53 number three in our shop. We'll be shipping that here at the end of April, early May, out to the Long Island Sound on the East Coast. A little bit about kind of where we've been in the last couple of years. Um, we strive and we're recognized as industry leaders in design, construction, and technology. Each of the last five new models that we've launched for Tartan Yachts has won a major award from at least one industry group. Uh, the Boat of the Year and Innovation Awards were won from Sailing World and Cruising World. Sail Magazine gave the 5300 an Innovation Award for its systems room. Um, for those of you who are experienced crawling around the bilges and engine compartments, we actually dedicated a room underneath the companionway stairs that we pumped the air conditioning to, so when you have to work on the boat, you can do it in comfort and you can get to everything easily. Um, on, the, on the construction and technology side of things, we offer a 15-year transferable hull warranty on every boat we build. Uh, we know we build a solid epoxy structure that will last for the life of the boat, so we're happy to warranty that for 15 years. Uh, carbon fiber masts, booms, spinnaker poles, and rudders are standard equipment on the vast majority of our models. And we've kind of led the forefront in production boat building on the technology side with the incorporation of the carbon fiber. Yeah. On the 53 footer that you're currently making, yeah. how long does it take to lay up that boat from, from start to finish? The 5300's about a six month build from start to finish. We started it, yeah, last, uh, late last November, early December, and we'll be wrapping it up here at the end of this month. On the other end of the spectrum, the Tartan Little Fantail 26, we can turn one of those boats in about three weeks, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little bit about CNC Yachts, our other brand. Uh, CNC Yachts, it's beginning today. Excuse me, I might have skipped one. Sorry. Uh, CNC Yachts was founded by George Cassian and George Cuth Cuthbertson as an independent design house in 1961. They were commissioned in 1965 to build a 40-footer for a Canadian sailor for its debut in the Canadian Canada's Cup. That 40-footer was called Red Jacket, won 11 of its first 13 races, including heading down south for the winter circuit and sweeping the Sorcy back then. Uh, wins in the Sorcy Admiral's Cup, Canada's Cup, really put CNC Yachts at the front of the racing spectrum. Uh, from 69 to 95, CNC Yachts built 4,000 yachts to over 50 designs. They were all built in Toronto, Ontario, um, and have, still enjoy a very loyal following in Canada. Tartan bought uh, CNC Yachts in 1996 after they fell, out, fell on some hard times. Look at CNC Yachts today. Uh, we've launched five new CNC models since 1996. Uh, currently in production we have two models, the 33 foot CNC 101, sorry, and the 38 foot CNC 115. Both the 101 and 115 won overall domestic boat of the year awards from Sailing World and or Cruising World. Uh, in 2002, CNC Yachts became the first production builder to build entirely with port composite epoxy hulls and decks. Uh, the epoxy is a phenomenal resin, completely impervious to water for the life of the boat. The cord construction guarantees that we build a nice, lightweight, and stiff structure. It's part of what we emphasize with CNC at first, on the performance side of the market to keep them, you know, at the leading edge of the racing market. Uh, we, after, shortly thereafter, transferred all of that technology over to the Tartan models, and all the Tartan models are built that way today as well. Uh, in 2004, CNC Yachts became the first production builder to equip all models with carbon fiber spars as standard equipment. Uh, we purchased a company called High Tech Composites out of North Carolina, moved their facility up here to Northeast Ohio, and we've been building carbon spars in-house ever since. 2002 CNC Yacht, 2012 CNC Yachts became the first production builder to develop a retractable sprit completely sealed to the interior of the yacht. Um, I'll kind of get into it with the 101, but one of the things we got as big feedback from our customers and dealer database was that they wanted a retractable bow sprit to fly asymmetrical spankers for ease. But their big concern was sealing that up so that you didn't wind up with a wet V-berth at the end of the day. Uh, we kind of solved that problem in a unique manner on the 101, and I'll get to it as we go through that. 
So the CNC 101 was launched in uh, late last year. Uh, the design group there was headed by myself. It was my first opportunity to kind of take the CNC brand or take any brand from start to finish, concept to reality. Uh, we've got a pretty talented team inside the shop. I spent the last eight and a half years working with Tim Jack and learning, you know, the tricks of the trade that he's learned over his 33 years in the business. We've also got a gentleman, gentleman named Rick Lanick who started off building sailboats with Douglas McLeod when he was 18 years old, has been with us for 26 years at this point, and is really talented when it comes to the design, the detail work, and interior layouts for tournament scenes and yachts. So we started with a design brief, uh, kind of what do we want out of this boat, what are we looking for? Three big things, simple, we wanted a well thought out plan, well executed. We wanted a boat that wasn't overly complicated, easy to use for experienced and inexperienced alike, and a very reliable boat. Fun, minimal maintenance, maximum time on the water. <coughs> I don't know about you, but I don't really like working on boats. I'd rather go sailing, especially since our season up here is so short. And then fast, uh, carbon, far, carbon spars, infused hulls and decks, and the lead keels provide a, a definite competitive edge on the water. Lastly was the exceptional value. We wanted to provide all the quality that goes into every Tartan CNC yacht into a more affordable package. Try to bring a younger group into the sport, um, some new blood, Tartan and CNC over their history, they've, they've made their bones selling multiple boats to, multi, you know, to, to an owner multiple times. Uh, you typically get them in at a smaller boat, grow them up through the range. Our 5300 that we're finishing right now is for a client who went from a Tartan 4400. Uh, some of you we were talking earlier know Larry King out of Sandusky. I think Larry's had four or five brand new Tartans over his lifetime. Um, that's a key thing to us to try to get our, our market, our clients in at a smaller boat and have them for a longer time. Uh, as part of the, the whole, before we got to the drawing board, we went out to our owners and our dealers and asked them what they wanted to see in the next new CNC. Uh, <coughs> three things were overwhelmingly given back to us. More performance. They wanted us to focus on keeping the boat light to ensure she does well on the race course. Uh, we did a lot of time and work to make sure that that happened. One of the knocks on the CNCs over the last several years is that they were too heavy. Uh, we did a thorough weight study, changed some build techniques, and really focused on the weight side of it so that we came up with a design weight of 8,200 pounds and an actual as-built launch weight on my boat at 8,338. Uh, we know she's at the number she should be, and it shows it on the water. Easily managed. We want to build a boat that was easily sailed by a couple or small crew so it gets used more. Uh, this is where we, I mentioned that retractable bowsprit. Uh, those of you familiar with sailing asymmetricals versus symmetricals, they're easier to use. That's all there is to it. If it's easier to use, you're going to put it up more often and use it more often. So we made sure that it had that retractable sprit, and then we sealed it to the interior of the boat so that you don't have the possibility of getting water. Nothing worse than having a great day out sailing, and then you go to, go to bed in the V-berth that night, and you got a wet bunk. The other one we did there is we used small, non-overlapping head sails. Uh, very little grinding, very easy to get the boat through attack. If we're out there racing and my crew has to grind a winch, they did something wrong through the attack. Uh, last one is comfortable open deck and living spaces. Uh, we re really wanted to make a boat that <coughs> was very comfortable when you're out there sailing and when you're at the dock. On the 101, we've got a wide open cockpit. It's 12 feet long on a 33 foot boat. We've been out there sailing. I've had four or five people behind the travel, behind the helm. Everybody's standing there, sitting there comfortably. Nobody's crowded. Makes for a really nice platform at the dock or out sailing, just for relaxing. A little bit about the design side of things. Unfortunately, I was trying to get a bunch of drawings in here. They don't translate well into the PowerPoint. Very difficult to read and see. Um, so I wasn't able to do a ton there. Uh, first page here is hull design. We spent a lot of time optimizing a hull shape for performance without tending to any extremes. Uh, we wanted a boat that would go upwind and downwind very well and be easy to sail. Some of the boats you see out there today, particularly in the racing side, they'll be extremely wide. They'll carry their beam all the way aft and they'll be very flat. It's a great boat downwind in 20 knots of breeze, but uphill in 20, it's gonna be miserable. So we made sure we didn't push to any corners, any extremes where the boat became a one-trick pony. Um, the display on the right there is actually the display from hull number one, her delivery, her maiden sail, where in about a 30 knot northeasterly on Lake Erie, we went from Fairport Harbor to Rocky River in under four hours and hit a top speed of 17.3. For the bulk of that trip, we only had a main up, and when we hit 17.3, we only had a main up. Uh, 
So after the design side, you know, we go through all the computer renderings, 3D modelings, uh, fluid dynamics to, to look at how the boat goes through the water. Then it's interior layouts, general arrangement plans, layout the bunks. You know, the series of compromises that allowed us to get the boat that performed on the water the way we wanted, but also had the accommodations that our customers were looking for. Once we had that nailed down, we roll into what we call the tooling development. Uh, we have a tooling department in-house at Tartan and CNC Yachts. They build the plugs that ultimately build the molds to build all of the products. On the left there, you can see the hull plug for the CNC 101. So essentially what we've done is we've built the boat upside down. Uh, the flat for the keels in the bottom of it, you can't really see it here, but the, the recess for the traditional CNC cove stripe is even there. We've taken what will be the final boat, built it upside down, and then we'll build the mold on top of that. On the right there, in a kind of earlier stage is the deck plug. Same idea, we build the actual deck uh, that then we build the mold on top of. The materials used in this, it, it's an MDF, it's a medium density fiberboard, relatively inexpensive, very stable, very easy to work with. We've got a very, very talented group of people that can take the drawings that Rick, Tim, and I put together and turn them into reality. One of the really nice things about having this tooling development in-house is that we're able to go out there and touch and feel and see every day that things are coming out the way we think they are. You know, just because it works on paper doesn't mean it works in reality, and we're able to verify that on a daily basis by controlling the stuff in-house. Uh, we can also guarantee symmetry, uh, dimensional accuracy, things that we've struggled with when we've tried to outsource activities like this to other companies. Once the plugs are built, we go ahead and build our own molds. Uh, we've got a very talented glass shop at the, uh, at the factory who builds some phenomenal products. In fact, for them it's kind of hard sometimes to build the molds because it's throttling back on the technology they use every day. The molds are built in a very traditional manner, hand lay up, chopper gun, vinyl ester resin, and just pile up some thickness to get stiffness. Um, very, very different from what we do building the boat. You know, the boats are all cord structure, very tightly engineered and laminates to keep them light, stiff, and safe. So on the left here, we've got the CNC 101 hull mold. We basically took that upside down hull plug, we sprayed it with that orange tooling gel coat that you see there, and then we built it up with about 13 layers of fiberglass on top of that. We wind up with a mold that's almost an inch thick, uh, weighs more than the boat ever will, but is dimensionally stable, and we'll expect to get between 150 and 200 hulls out of one hull mold. Um, last time we tried to outsource a boat, it was 2006, they built a hull plug for it, a hull mold for us, we got six boats out of it before we had to build another one. That's why we brought it